Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. After nearly four months of waiting, SpaceX has finally submitted the mandatory mishap report to the FAA. Now, a lot of other things need to happen with the FAA and with SpaceX before a launch can realistically take place. Six to eight weeks? It's going to be a hell of a lot longer than that. And meanwhile, from a source that I find to be a little bit more reliable, at least as far as time frames are concerned, Tori Bruno gives us the latest update in regards to the progress on Vulcan Centaur. Will this troubled rocket finally take flight before the end of the year and before ULA starts losing some very valuable contracts? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon. Once again, welcome to the Angry Astronaut. Preparing for my next date, my next tour date coming up uh, at the end of this month. I'm going to be going to Norfolk, Virginia. Still don't have a solid date for that yet because we're having a few issues with the space. Um, if you happen to live in that area and know of a meeting space that I could get for $300 or less that will fit anywhere from 50 to 100 people, well, email me, let me know so I can lock down that particular date and then I'm moving on to Pittsburgh where I'm hoping to have a very special announcement in regards to that particular date. If you're interested in attending any of these particular events or if you're interested in a digital copy of my book, all of the details are in the description. Let's move on to the topic at hand. So it's been a couple of months since ULA experienced an anomaly with their test stand out at Huntsville, Alabama, a rather serious anomaly that destroyed not only the test article, but also a lot of the test stand as well. And really, when all of that happened and ULA decided that they were going to have to make some modifications to the Centaur 5 upper stage of the Vulcan Centaur, well, just about everybody, including myself, were concluding that there was no way in hell that Vulcan would was going to be able to fly before next year. That may still be the case, of course, but Tori Bruno has come out with a recent update of the modifications they are making to the Centaur 5. They seem to be moving along very quickly, and it may be possible for Vulcan Centaur to fly before the end of the year, which will be very important not only to ULA, but to a lot of their customers. When I first saw this, I decided that I had no chance of winning the 100k challenge, that my butt was going to have a SpaceX fanboy tattoo on it. Come hell or high water, there was no way I was going to be able to avoid that. And for those of you who don't know what that challenge is, I made a bet some time ago now that Vulcan Centaur would be able to deliver Peregrine to the moon before Starship could carry out a successful orbit of the Earth. However, once that ended, incident took place, and once it became clear that Centaur 5 was going to have to go back to Huntsville for structural modifications, well, everything that I was feeling at this moment absolutely evaporated and turned into a lot of cynicism. Four, three, two, we have ignition. The components that everybody thought was going to be the most problematic, that is to say the BE-4 engines, seem at last to be in very good shape. Not only that, a full-scale wet dress rehearsal was carried out on the entire vehicle, indicating that all of the pressure tanks and everything else seemed to be in good shape, in spite of what happened to the test article. Indeed, this rocket very possibly could have been launched with Peregrine in tow, without any modifications and probably would have made a successful flight. However, ULA doesn't like to deal in probabilities, and given what happened in Huntsville because of the extremely thin steel being just a little too thin, they decided to make the necessary modifications on the first Centaur 5 before they tried to send it into space. Once again, a very good idea, but one that was going to take a considerable amount of time. However, 
However, it does appear that the necessary modifications are almost finished. Utilizing advanced laser and resistance arc welding, the forward dome on the Centaur 5 tank has been reinforced sufficiently in order to handle the pressures of the fuel and oxidizer. That being the case then, it's very possible that this thing could be on its way back to Cape Canaveral, placed again on top of the booster and going through additional testing, final testing that is, before a launch can take place. Because keep in mind, the static fire is done. A wet dress rehearsal is done. Everything that you would expect to happen prior to a maiden launch has already taken place. And again, the troubled BE-4 engines seem to be functioning extremely well. Yes, they had a problem with one of them on the test stage and an engine that was intended to be used on the Vulcan Centaur that will be carrying the Sierra Space Dream Chaser, but that was in an early stage of testing. The engines that are going to be powering this particular Vulcan have gone through lots of testing and have been flight certified. That other engine had obviously not been flight certified and really experienced an anomaly that SpaceX experiences with Raptors all the time. There's no reason to think that the BE-4s are going to be a problem now. It's still taken an unacceptable long amount of time to get them into service, but after all, given the problems that Vulcan had with the Centaur upper stage, it's very possible that this rocket wouldn't have been ready to go regardless of when the BE-4s were delivered. So, according to Tori Bruno, he thinks that Vulcan Centaur will be launching before the end of the year, and I believe him. As far as what Elon Musk talks about in terms of getting Starship into orbit within six to eight weeks, well, maybe technically that might be possible, but as far as the FAA is concerned, there's no way in hell that's going to be happening. At the earliest, I think it might happen sometime in October, but it may be significantly longer than that. And I know a lot of you are getting annoyed with me being a naysayer about all of this stuff, but when it comes right down to it, there's a lot of reasons for me to be frustrated right now. Because keep in mind, almost immediately after SpaceX made their fateful launch on April 20th, which in many ways had lots of successful things happen, Elon Musk told us that it was going to be six to eight weeks before we would see another launch, which was never realistic at all, and everybody knew that. But the thing that was really disturbing was the fact that Bill Nelson seemed to not understand how how Elon time works, and he went to Congress with this same information. Even though it was far more likely that it was going to be six to eight months from April 20th, not six to eight weeks before Starship would have a chance of flying again. And why is this the case? Well, obviously because things happen during this test launch that simply were not supposed to happen. The most obvious thing that went wrong was the amount of damage that the pad sustained during liftoff. Those 33 Raptor engines not only destroyed the pad, but chucked concrete all the way into the Gulf of Mexico, as you can see right there before the camera pans upward so that the viewers don't have to see that unpleasant now, granted, there's probably nothing about the concrete that was environmentally harmful, but I assure you that if you took truckload after truckload of concrete and just dumped it into the ocean without any kinds of permits, that would have seriously pissed off any environmental organization. And this was not the only thing that went wrong with this flight. There were, of course, multiple engine failures right from the beginning, and I think a lot of those engine failures could probably be traced back to the maelstrom of concrete that was hammering the rocket for nearly 10 seconds before it could climb away from the pad. But in addition to all of that, you also had the rocket losing control at the end of the flight, and for over 40 seconds, SpaceX was unable to blow Blow it up. Now think about this for a moment. A rocket at this stage of its flight is traveling many kilometers per minute. That being the case then, if it went significantly off course and say for example started heading back towards South Padre Island, it is entirely possible that it could have been directly over the island by the time they managed to get it to self-destruct. Something like that of course would have resulted in an enormous amount of stainless steel rain peppering the spectators on the island and all of the 
those hotels as well. And in case you think I'm exaggerating about the potential danger represented by an out-of-control rocket without a flight termination system, like this Russian Proton rocket, well, check this out. And just to be clear, the Proton has a liftoff mass of 700 metric tons or so. Starship weighs 5,000. Needless to say, an out-of-control Starship with a malfunctioning flight termination system is nothing different than a conventional ballistic missile. Very dangerous indeed to the population if something isn't done about this malfunction. And so that's probably why the FAA needed to see as much detail as possible about what exactly went wrong during this first orbital flight test. This was probably the most significant problem Problem that Starship had. The fact that control was clearly lost over the rocket, and yet it took them so long to blow the thing up. So while Elon Musk was giving us estimates of six to eight weeks till the next flight, his company was in the process of putting together a report that was going to take four months to submit to the FAA. And obviously no flight was going to be possible until this report was submitted. And now, after SpaceX took four months to put the thing together, the FAA needs to study it in detail. Every little nuance, every facet of this flight needs to be studied in exhaustive detail before the FAA can put together a list of corrective actions that SpaceX needs to take before they can even submit for another launch permit. Keep in mind that the existing launch permit that SpaceX has submitted is no longer valid because it has to be adjusted based on the FAA's decision regarding public safety, national security, security, foreign policy concerns, and even insurance requirements for SpaceX to assess the potential environmental and public impact of any future launch. In other words, the FAA, like any government agency, is probably going to take a long time before they send this back to SpaceX. Then SpaceX has to implement the necessary changes. Granted, they may have made a lot of these changes already, but I doubt they've made all of them. And then once the changes are made, the FAA needs to have a look at the launch site, a look at all of SpaceX's plans, all of the details about the new version of Starship, because keep in mind, this new rocket has all kinds of new modifications, including this new hot staging feature that I frankly am not entirely certain is the best idea. If you fire the engines on a rocket while it's still connected to the booster, isn't that going to damage the booster and make it difficult to reuse it? But that having been said, all of these things need to be done and the license has to be modified accordingly before the FAA is going to grant any sort of permission. If you think Think that a government agency is going to be able to get all of this stuff done in six to eight weeks? Well, that's not Elon time. That's delusion time. And I'm really sorry to be saying all of this. As many of you know, the topic of my lecture series is how Starship will save the world. I want this rocket to succeed. I'm actually desperate to see it succeed because it represents the brightest future for our spaceflight industry. But it's never going to succeed unless all of this is done properly and safely. Thank you very much for watching. Please smash that like and hit that subscribe. It's very important to the success of my channel. And also, please consider supporting my upcoming tour either through Patreon or PayPal or through my GoFundMe page. And I will be happy to give you a free copy of my digital book along with any $10 donation along with a ticket for the tour event nearest you. And until Starship can finally get off the ground and 
and tell Elon Musk and SpaceX do everything that's necessary, regardless of how long it takes. And until we get a realistic estimate as to when OFT2 is actually really gonna happen, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.